Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog, and today we're going to be talking about $1 Venom comics that you can pick up at your local comic store. So if you're going out to pick up Venomized and uh, the Nativity Part 1 in Venom Issue 164, both of those are coming out in comic book stores on April 4th, which I think is tomorrow, uh, depending on when I post this. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I want to make sure if you go out there that there's other Venom stuff that you can get for really cheap, and it'll fill you in on what's been going on in the character in their history pretty much since the beginning. So Marvel, they like to put out these books called True Believers, and they're $1 issues, and they reprint key moments in each character's history. And sometimes they do it when, you know, characters are getting a movie made, or if they just want to focus on the character for a month, uh, or something big in the comics is going to happen. So like in May, they're going to be doing another set of these, I think another like 10 or 12 books, and they're going to focus on Wolverine. And Wolverine is coming back in the comics. He's been dead for a few years, and they're going to bring him back. So they're reprinting key moments in his history you know, to get you guys excited, I guess. And so they're doing the same thing with Venom. And this is the 30th anniversary coming up in, in May. So for the month of March, they decided to make a bunch of Venom comics uh, to get people caught up on the character for before Venomize comes out, before the relaunch of the comic comes out. And these are really great. So if you're out there and you haven't picked up any of these, please do when you go to the comic store tomorrow to get Venomized. So the first one up is Venom Symbiosis. Uh, this one is a reprinting of Web of Spider-Man, I think number one, and it's the issue where Spider-Man removes the black costume from himself. Uh, so this is him going into the church, being near the church bells, ripping the costume apart, and it falling down to Eddie Brock. Although you don't see that fully happen in this one, uh, you just see Spider-Man remove the costume, and then the costume saves Peter's life uh, before it, you know it, it, it like disappears. Uh, so yeah, so it shows it shows like a little bit of. Uh, that love, that connection it has for Peter Parker, and Peter's like left with the, the church bells going off in his ear, could cause major damage, and the symbiote pulls him just out of earshot so he's safe, and then disappears into the, the concrete. And as we know, it goes on to Eddie Brock, which is the next one they reprint, which is called Venom vs. Spider-Man, and this is a reprinting of Amazing Spider-Man issue 300 with Todd McFarlane artwork on there, which looks awesome. Um, and a lot of these books we've talked about on the show before already, so I'm not going to do full synopsis on each of them, but I'll just tell you briefly what they're about. This is the first time Spider-Man meets Venom, uh, and they battle, and they also end up battling in the church, like on the church, uh, where Spider-Man separated the suit from himself. So that's a really key issue. Uh, this is Venom and uh, Carnage, and this is a reprinting not of the first issue Carnage showed up in, but I think the second or third, and it's the one where Spider-Man and Venom are teaming up to fight against Carnage. And I think this is might be the third part of the storyline, uh, which is the conclusion of the Carnage story. So that's a pretty key issue there. Uh, you get to see, you know, basically Spider-Man betray Venom. Uh, does he doesn't keep his word and uh, and how he has to how he lives with that regret a little bit at the end there and how he feels that regret uh, but also seeing these two you know team up it's kind of sequel rules normally if you're it's like oh I have a villain and then if the, if the villain's still around then in the sequel you uh, team up with them and that's kind of how you know like the X-Men movie did that with Magneto and uh, I think uh, Thor did that with Loki so, you know, that's kind of like the rule in, in sequels. So this is, you know, the sequel to the creation of Venom in a way by creating Carnage. And so it makes Venom and Spider-Man team up with each other. Uh, then another key issue, I kind of wish they would have reprinted issue 375, but that would have been a really thick book to reprint for a dollar. So I kind of understand why they didn't do that. But they did reprint Lethal Protector number one. So you could pick this up. Uh, it doesn't have the foil cover, uh, but it still has the artwork, which looks really good by uh, Mark Bagley here. I think that was Mark Bagley that drew that, or maybe it was Ron Lim. I know they both did the book, you know, the, the actual book itself. Um, but yeah, guest starring Spider-Man. So this is the first solo Venom comic book that ever came out, uh, was Lethal Protector, and it was a six-issue miniseries. So they reprinted that first one, so you could see him go back to San Francisco, kind of set up that storyline, which, you know, the movie's going to kind of play off of, which, you know, with him living in San Francisco and stuff. Uh, then we also have Venom Shiver, which we talked about the other day, in my, uh, or I think just like two episodes ago, um... Again, depending on when I post this, there's a bunch of comics re being reprinted and coming out later this fall, and one of them is the Daniel Way run, which is called Shiver, and it kind of takes like a John Carpenter approach to Venom. It's a symbiote in the Arctic, and it gets loose, and it starts replicating people, and or, or going into people, and making them kill each other, and it's just like the movie The Thing, and I actually thought it was really cool. It was a neat take. Even though it's pretty much copying The Thing, that's one of my favorite movies of all time, so it's I'm cool with it. It, it worked. It worked for Venom, for sure. Uh, so yeah, pick that up. Uh, Dark Origin. I think this reprints issue number two or three of the series, and this will you know basically tell you the the moment 
from Eddie's point of view of him getting the symbiote, what it was like for him, the transformation, seeing the the memories of an alien uh, being fed into his mind, uh, and then you also get to see a little bit of Eddie Brock's personal life as well in this. So if you want to see more Eddie Brock stuff uh, before he gets the costume, this is a key issue right here and a key storyline that they're going to reprint later this year, which I'm very excited for. Uh, then we have Venom Flashpoint, and this was like an amazing Spider-Man issue, point one or something, like th 350 or 651.1 or I don't know, something like really crazy like that. Uh, but basically it's the first appearance of Flash Thompson Venom. Uh, so yeah, for those who don't know, Flash Thompson, the bully that used to pick on Peter Parker, uh, later on in the comics, he actually becomes Venom. And he, uh, he's a cool take on Venom, too. Uh, the, his, he goes by the name Agent Venom, and it's like a, a like a government agency that is hired, you know, Flash Thompson, and he's bonding him with the alien symbiote. Because Flash Thompson, he was a good soldier. He actually, that was one of the cool things in the comic, was that after years of picking on Peter Parker, he signs up for the military and goes off to fight in, in the war. And Spider-Man gains an immense amount of respect for Flash, but Flash does lose his legs. So when Flash returns, they did all these like really amazing stories uh, with Flash. When he comes back, he's in the wheelchair. He's um, you know coping, dealing with you know life changing for him. And one of the things I thought was neat with this was they they put the they and you know the Venom symbiote on him, and the Venom symbiote was able to give him legs you know temporarily while he's bonded with it, but to avoid. Full symbiosis in the, in the suit taking over completely, he's only allowed to wear the suit for like a, so many hours. And then he goes on a mission, he comes back, and they take the suit off. And that's kind of like the setup for uh, Agent Venom, which is a really great comic book. So this is kind of the introduction to that. So if you've never read that, you know, you got to pick this up. And this one here, which is Agent Venom number one uh, by Rick Remender and Tony Moore. And this book is great. Uh, Tony Moore, I think, was the first artist that drew Walking Dead for like the first six issues, I believe. Uh, and uh, his art's fantastic in this. It's really, really good. And uh, it has, like I said, uh, Flash uh, Thompson going around and, uh, and you know, using the Venom symbiote for the government, for the U.S. government. It's a really cool storyline. I, I dig it a ton. Uh, so again, more Age of Venom stuff. They reprinted this issue, which is the first time uh, the Toxin suit, which is Carnage's uh, baby, you know, if if Carnage is Venom's baby, then Carnage had a baby, and it was called Toxin, and it bounced around to a couple different hosts, but it ended up in this storyline where some villains capture Eddie Brock and they force the Toxin suit to bond with him and try to make him kill Agent Venom. It's a really dark storyline, but really really good as well. Uh, this is written by Rick Remender and Colin Bunn, and this is right before Colin Bunn took over the book and started writing the book uh, solo. So yeah, really cool stuff uh, in that issue as well. And then the last one they reprinted was Venom Homecoming, which was the, the recent storyline that uh, came out right before they renumbered it to issue 150. This is Venom number six, and it's uh, the Lee Price storyline, where Lee Price is like this crazy military guy who gets hold of the symbiote, and he actually drives the symbiote insane, because after the symbiote has been bonded with Flash Thompson, it's actually started to become a hero, and it liked being a hero. And it was like, hey, I like doing this. I like doing good deeds. And uh, and then it gets, you know, caught onto uh, or bonds with a guy named Lee Price, who it thinks might be a good person. Turns out Lee is not a good guy. So in this issue, we see the suit get ripped from Lee by Spider-Man and end up back in the possession of Eddie Brock. And this is the return of Eddie Brock. So you get a nice arc here. Although it doesn't go over like um, the Mac Gargan Venom, who was the Scorpion in the Spider-Man comics. There was a time where he became Venom for a while and he signed up with the Thunderbolts. I would have liked one of those reprinted in here. Uh, but if you just read these like solo, then you don't get full stories in most of them. Uh, but... The ones you do get, it does feel like a nice arc of like, okay, it's the suit. It goes from Spider-Man to Eddie to Flash Thompson back to Eddie. Uh, and so that's kind of neat. So it's a full like decades of, uh, you know, like th almost three decades of, uh, of an arc of the character in the suit uh, all in like 11 comic books here. So like I said, if you have not picked those up yet, please go pick them up. They're only a dollar each. That's $11 total. Um, I think Unknown Comics, you can buy a bundle with all of them. I think you could have. I don't know if you still can. Um, but just in case, I'll put a link down to their website down below. Uh, so, you know, if you, if you want to go just order them online. And also use Comic Store Locator. I'll put a link to that down below in case uh, you don't know if you're near a comic book store. I definitely want people to go out and pick up Venomize tomorrow. 
So do that, please do. And even if you don't pick up Venom 164, which I recommend you pick that up as well, that's another issue coming out tomorrow. And it's part one of this nativity two-part storyline that's going to wrap up the current Venom stuff and set up the next uh, you know, year's worth of Venom stories. So that's a key issue too. Uh, but then also pick these up, please, because uh, these are awesome. I love that Marvel reprints these, and I'm, I'm, I always buy them. I bought the Spider-Man ones, the Jean Grey ones, uh, and I'm looking forward to the Wolverine ones coming up. Uh, they did X-Men ones for a while, and uh, they did Wolverine before as well when Logan came out. So yeah, I like when Marvel does this. It's really cool. It's a cheap way to get amazing stories. So definitely pick them up. Thanks for watching the channel. As always, let me know what you think in the comments down below of these books. Do you have any? Which ones do you want to get? Let me know down below. Thanks so much for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.